Let's try again. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, so my name is Matt. I'm the organizer for GDG San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles. I'm also a mentor for the Pacific region. Uh, and my goal today is to make sure that by the end of this presentation, all of you have a plan for finding sponsors. organizer for GDG Dallas and my goal for today is really to help you understand that you have a lot of different options when it comes to sponsorship that you probably didn't even think about. So let's do a, a quick show of hands. How many people here like being an organizer? Everyone should put their hand up. Okay. <laughs> Just check it. How many people, keep your hands up. How many people like chatting about technical stuff with his colleagues work? Yeah, everybody. How many people like asking people for money? Some, some people? Okay, yeah, some people. Um, that's okay. Um, it's not a requirement to ask for money or find sponsors, but like with the rest of life, it's a lot easier when you have money. So that's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> so there's a few things that every single meetup needs, right? So when we think about that, we really need a place to hold the meetup. We need people to go. We need speakers, because they got to have somebody to listen to. And you know, food for the people, and kind of bonus tying in with uh, Dan and Tim earlier, swag for the people, right? So what are some of the things that sponsorship can actually get us? It can get us all those things. And we're actually gonna go over a number of ways that that could be possible, but if we think about it, a place for the meetup, you have a sponsor who's actually giving you a place to go. You have people, wow, that sponsor has employees, they probably are gonna show up. Uh, speakers, they probably have people who know how to speak on the subject, especially if they're uh, actually hosting, so they probably need more people on that subject, so great way to also get speakers. And food, hey, they're already there. Um, they probably have some good catering, and hey, you know, get as much as you can. Uh, <laughs> food is a great thing to get from them, or a different sponsor. And swag, hey, they probably have some touchstone items, especially from their HR department, uh, to give out to people at that meetup so that they have something to remember that event by. So now that we know why we need sponsors, let's try to figure out who we should be asking. Absolutely. So first off, like I said earlier, HR, really, we're going to focus specifically on recruiters. So recruiters have budgets. And when you think about how much your GDG costs to operate in a year, you're looking at probably what? Thousand, maybe $2,000 in a year, right? Total, you know, after kind of Google sponsorship and whatnot of various events. Do you know how much it costs for them to hire somebody? It's usually five to 10% of their salary, sometimes more. If you think about what the tech salaries are in your area, you are looking at probably five to $25,000 to hire somebody. If they hire one person out of your GDG over the next five years, they've already, they've done well. They've made their money back and then some. So think about what that is from a value proposition. So look at the, the names on this list and large companies in general. I got a figure here that I want to read properly. So in 2018, uh, it was estimated that $572 billion was spent on marketing worldwide. 572 billion with a B. So that how much money are you spending on pizza and drinks for a meetup? Okay, like it's so small it doesn't even make a difference in that number. And so when we go and we ask for something, it seems like a big deal to us because we're doing the asking and it's gonna make a big impact on our community. But to them, they're like, yeah, sure, here's my credit card, you know. <laughs> Or, or how do you want, me, you, want, you want me to just buy you like $20 worth of gift cards to Domino's? Sure, there you go. It's nothing. It really is nothing, especially the bigger the company. Um, so look for the biggest companies, the biggest employers in your area. Those are the first ones to go to. Like GameCube logo? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to bring up something that you probably haven't thought about, which is nonprofit organizations. There are a number of large nonprofit organizations that have large meeting spaces that would be perfect for your event, especially considering that you are community oriented. They also have experts at getting money. 
They're professionals at it. That's their day job. Uh, so what are they going to be able to help you with? Not only maybe a space, but also advisors on where to talk to and who has the biggest or best budgets, even if they aren't necessarily a tech-oriented nonprofit organization. So whether you're in a, a big city or a small town, your elected officials like to take credit for positive things that happen there. <laughs> okay, it's true. So you can use that for, for free publicity. That's not money, but it's free publicity, which will be greater number of attendees, things like that, maybe even pull in other sponsors because they see the publicity. Um, but if you are in a place that maybe has some meeting spaces, some government buildings do, you might be able to use that for a venue. Um, and if you have like an office of economic development or some type of initiative to bring more tech to your area, those could also be resources and there may even be money or they'll at least help you with various things that you have to take care of. Human resources. Let's think about what your GDG actually has. It has people from various skill levels. It has an outreach program in and of itself. It has all the kind of things that your company probably wants to be associated with, as well as other companies in the area. It's goodwill, right? Goodwill brings people in. If, if, have you ever, when you're looking at a company, tried to see what other stuff they participated in? Absolutely, freaking lootly right? Because you actually care about what somebody does. And so they know that. And they want to take advantage of it. That's a value that you actually bring. It's their opportunity. So earlier we heard all the reasons why Google supports the G2G program. Other companies have developer relations teams too, and they're looking for people like us with communities to help push their API or their product or whatever it may be. And those teams already understand what we do. They already have the swag or the budget to give us. So it's a much easier ask than trying to explain to someone else oh, this is what we do and this is why we do it. Um, so this is another great resource. Find out who the developer advocates are. Often they're the people who are manning booths at a tech conference. So I met the developer advocate for Intuit at uh, Next last year, and we just sat down and had a great talk, and it was like a normal thing. It wasn't like a, a very uncomfortable position for me. And don't be afraid to ask your attendees for money. We know how much just a couple dollars a person can actually go. And this is especially true when it maybe comes to DevFest or larger events that you might be having on the weekends, like study jams. It actually makes a big difference if you can afford to actually give somebody snacks, right? Or more than just pizza, especially if they're going to be there all day, right? When we have our normal meetups, we're looking at, what, a couple hours tops? A lot of people can get through with just the basics or, you know, maybe almost nothing. That's not true when you're holding larger events. So you need to think about inclusive options. Sometimes that costs money. Just a reality. All right, so we know why we want to find sponsors. We know who we should be asking. Let's talk about how we're going to go about do it and kind of formulate our process. Okay, so one more. So usually I start by making a list. And I just list every company I can think of in the area. Maybe I look at job boards and I see who's recruiting for Android or web developers or whatever it may be that seems appropriate for your community and just start making the list of the companies. If you can find more information out about them, like their email addresses, put that in there too, um, their social. Uh, and then what I usually do is I say, do I actually know anybody that works at those companies? I'll look on LinkedIn. I'll think about who our members are and if I know where they work, I'll put that on there too. Um, and so I just create this huge list and if you're lucky and you have other organizers with you or volunteers, I have another column to say who's in charge of trying to contact that company and we delegate it out. Um, and I usually just do this in a Google Sheet and we share it. And so I compile that list and I look for email addresses for the recruiters. Sometimes it's just recruiting at, sometimes it's careers at. Um, it could be also for uh, if they have developer relations or anything that seems like a public email, marketing at, that type of thing. And I put that on there and then I start sending out emails. I try to tailor each email to be a little specific. I don't want it to look like a form. So I'll usually say something like, oh, you know, people in our community are really interested in, insert product here, you know, that type of thing. Um, or I'll say, we, we, you know, I saw your booth at XYZ event. And so now they, oh, we, they may, they'll think that they talked to me. They're not gonna remember whether they did or not. I didn't even have to really be at the event. They don't know, you know. Um, <laughs> but you, you put something a little more personal, they're more likely to respond. 
And if you're not getting responses to your emails or you can't find an email address there, the next good channel is, a, is social media. So if they have a Twitter account or Facebook page or pick your choice, uh, go ahead and reach out on that. And typically the person who's in charge of that, they're looking to see who's at mentioning them anyways and they're reading that. So they're already on that team of people who deals with like the outside world. And an easy thing to say to them is, yeah, I've got a community of 50 people, 100 people, whatever it may be. We'd love to have you come by. And they're thinking in their head, oh, I can get 50 more followers real quick. And that's what they're in charge of. One more. Um, and then the real key thing to do is to make sure you follow through. So you can't just ask once, ask more than once, keep asking until the person says, don't ask me anymore. <laughs> okay? And Remove no one's ever me said from that. This list. <laughs> yeah, no one's ever said that to me. You don't just space it out, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, don't get a restraining heart. Space it out. How far? I wouldn't, I wouldn't make it even. So like maybe the first time it's two weeks, maybe the, the next time, second time it's three weeks and make it look random, you know? But you have to keep track. That's the important part of having the spreadsheet. So you can keep track, last time I tried. And just you, like any relationship, exactly, right? Like I know, you're yeah. like, it's uh, a game. oh, I was thinking of yeah, you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Give me a call. I had a question to ask you. Yeah. Um, but also follow through. Anyone who's actually given you a sponsorship before, keep in touch because you're going to need sponsors again later. And it's so much easier to get a second sponsorship than it is to get the first. They already know what they're in for, and you can reach out to them well in advance. So we're already getting close to Dev Fest, but if you had a sponsor from last year, Three months ago, you could have reached out to them and said, hey, we're going to have a dev fest. Are you interested? And keep pinging them a couple times so that they're aware and you're keeping in touch. So there are some things that you really need to know about your GDG before you ever approach a sponsor. You really need to know your member count. By that, I mean, you know, kind of your active members as well as, you know, what it is on Meetup, which may just be a lie. Um, and then how many events have you had in the last year? What, if what is their subject matter? What is the makeup of people who actually come out to your events? And diversity inclusion numbers are not just kind of basic things, right? Like how many people are students versus boot camp grads? What is their experience level? You know, oh, okay, so we see that we have a lot of people who develop in mobile and web. Maybe I should be targeting a company that does a lot of things in mobile and web. Or certain experience levels. Who are they trying to hire? What are they trying to hire for? What skill sets? You know, or even what kind of multiple technologies do a lot of people actually participate in? It's really kind of important to understand that these things are what they really need to know in order to justify how much money you're asking for. So there's some homework that you could do ahead of time. And this is usually the easy stuff because it's preparation. You can do it at the comfort of your home at any time of day. Um, but you're, you're asking professionals. And so they're going to expect you to be the same level of professional as they are. And that means they're going to say, oh, yeah, sure, send me your perspectives or send me your info sheet, whatever term they use. And you're going to be like, uh oh, I better do that now. And five days later, you might respond. So you want to do this ahead of time so that as soon as they say that, you say, no problem, I'm actually sending it to you right now. You should have it in your inbox. Go ahead and open it. You know, that's what you want to do. You want to be ready when they ask. So it doesn't really matter what you put in there. You can Google it and just find templates. You could also ask other chapters or mentors. Um, but you want to have the information that Stacy just talked about in a nice, glossy pamphlet, PDF, PowerPoint, whatever you want it to be. Um, and that way you look professional. Um, it's also great if you have a form on your website. I want to be a sponsor. And then, you know, some questions. What level of sponsorship? What's your budget? You know, that type of stuff. Um, it's awkward to ask someone, how much money do you have? Or how much money will you give me? But it's super easy to put a question on a form that says that, and people will fill it in. And the worst thing that happens is, don't make it a required field. They'll say, I don't know. You know. But at least you know then that's the one that doesn't know. And if someone else fills it in and says, I have 50,000, you're going to call that person first. <laughs> so put it on the form. Um, and then once you have that form, make sure that there's a link to it on your event site. So whether it's your normal website or a DevFest or IWD one, make sure the link's there. And then promote it via social media saying, hey, just like you would for a call for speakers, we, we have a call for sponsors. And people will see that. Maybe a member will see it and say, oh, yeah, my company might want to sponsor. Most of your, your community work somewhere. They might be students, but they have access to somebody that they could say, oh, by the way, I'm going to this event. I'm kind of involved with it. Does anybody here want to maybe like, have a booth there? So promote it. Yeah, it's a really easy way to think about this is kind of like creating a dating profile page, right? Something that tells a lot about you, but maybe your meetup actually operates a lot closer to your Facebook page. It's how your family and friends actually get in touch with you. So, it's important to really know 
okay, I want to put my best foot forward and the things that other people might be looking for, as well as just kind of going into, okay, now this is just for us and our family, right? And as part of that, what is the added value that you bring, right? Like, only you, only you, it's an opportunity, right? You know, have, have you ever had somebody ask you for money, like an investment in their business? They're like, I have an opportunity for you. Have you watched late night, you know, kind of pyramid schemes? It's an opportunity, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's important that you recognize that this is your opportunity that you are giving them, ultimately, to be a part of your GDG. And you can give them kind of logos and everything, promotion at the beginning and the end of kind of all of your presentations, highlight them, maybe have some of their recruiters, HR folks in the back, or even engineers for other people to talk to, um, as well as free promotion online and in social media. Uh, I'll put it out there. We have a really awesome sponsor uh, in Ray Wonderlick, and they're getting mentioned right now, um, <laughs> that actually sends us books, technical books that are quite expensive for us to give out each time. All they actually require is that we take a picture, post it on Twitter, tag them, say thank you, and that's it, right? Like, it's really, really simple, but essentially, it's a deal for them, and it's a great deal for us, and our members absolutely love it. So, true story, last week I was at my parents' house, and my dad says, come over, I gotta show you something, and I was like, oh, sounds serious. And he, he pulls out a piece of paper that has a, a list of bills that they pay every month, and it was grouped by month. And he's like, you know, I just want to make sure that we don't forget anything, and if anything ever happens, this is the list, make sure you know where it is. I'm looking, I'm like, this is a Word doc. I'm like, what? Why <laughs> would you do this on a Word doc? That's terrible. I'm like, you should do this on a Google Sheet. You could sort it by month, you could sort it by the, the, who you're paying the bill to, when you could have a column for when you last paid it, and then we could share it with my sisters and I, and then no matter what happens, we'll always have access to it on our phone, wherever, whatever. And by the end of my little talk, he was like, okay, yeah, that's a great idea, let's do it now. He got so excited about using Google Sheets. I mean, so what I did was I just brought up my passion about spreadsheets, and Google Sheets in particular, and I convinced them to stop using a Word doc for this. We all have that same passion about various topics, including our communities, and we need to use that when we're talking to these potential sponsors. We can't just say, we're having an event on this date, we'd like $100. We gotta explain how great it is, and how wonderful it is, and how much fun it is, and keep going on until they say, okay, I got it. Don't, like, enough already, I, I'm, I'll be there. The worst that happens is they'll attend and not be a sponsor because they'll get excited and they can't get the money. The best thing that can happen is they attend, a bunch of their coworkers attend, and they sponsor, and they bring other people, and so on and so forth. Um, so you got to bring in that passion and uh, the value that they're going to get out of being a sponsor and you got to do this as quickly as possible and the best way to do it is to just think about it as a normal conversation like I just told you about the spreadsheets and Google Sheets and I would happy to talk about Google Sheets all you want later if you want to because I love them so much and you got to just think about it I'm just talking to somebody about my community and then at some point we'll get to that point oh by the way we're looking for sponsors and so you really want to take that initiative. Anytime you see somebody, if they're working on at a coffee shop, let's say on a laptop, they got a sticker. Hey, and I see you got a sticker of Flutter. Oh, that's so interesting. Blah 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 blah. You know that type of thing. Take that that opportunity to talk to them, and maybe they could be a potential sponsor. So we're going to do something a little different now. In this bag, I have a real prize. It's not a Google Mini. I promise you, it's not a Home Mini. <laughs> It's not. I promise. I know it looks like it, and I felt really weird with it. It's not. You can measure it, and you could actually tell it's not. So we have a prize here, and we want to pull up three people to give a quick pitch as to why you should get this prize, why we should sponsor you, okay, and your community. So we, can we get a, like some volunteers? For three people to volunteer? Gosh, three people? Thank you. Okay, so we're actually, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Do you want to you pick one, and I'll pick one, and we'll go back and forth? Hmm. Keep your hands up. I'm actually going to go with Sacramento over here. <laughs> okay. Michael, I, want, come I, on I up. really want you Let, to sell us on, on getting this free prize, man. Okay. Come on. Come should, on up. Should we, pull, should we pull up all three at once, or you want to do one at a time? Um, I, I think one at a time. One at a time? Okay. okay. All right. Oh, well, oh, good afternoon, everyone. So, my name is Michael Frederick. I'm from GDC Sacramento. And uh, my goal for our club with their tradition, is to um, take a survey of what our uh, regular members are looking for and to get a dedicated speaker to each one of those topics within the next year. 
As for why I, I think um, we should get that uh, prize, I would say it's because we are a new, young, upstanding uh, community, uh, myself and Mac, and we are passionate, we are dedicated to giving the best experience we can to our local developers and working with our community, making them a part of, um, making them a part of the process, making a safe and great community where people can have a good time, they can learn about great things, and they can come up with great ideas. So. Thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, let's get someone else up here. Any, any volunteers, any volunteers? Joseph? Yeah, Joseph, come on up, come on up. <laughs> hey, here you, go. here you go, Joseph. All right. You gotta stand next to him for the mic. Oh, yeah. Morning. Joseph, stand on her other side so, so you can get them. Or, or, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna. Yeah, just stand up. Come. You could stand at Come, the podium. Come. Go for the podium. There you go. No, wait, but take the mic. Oh, yeah. Okay, got, got three mics here. <laughs> I don't think you need that one. Okay. Just those two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's really great to be able to speak to you today about GDG Cloud Boston. Uh, we're a group of a lot of enterprise generally focused developers that are really looking to solve the problems that you know, they face every day in the enterprises. And I know that you're working with a lot of enterprise customers yourself at, Ma at Megaco. And we really feel that you know, Megacorp's product line really appeals to our demographic and that you know, we'll really be able to like show them the value proposition of Megacorp. And through the sponsorship, we think we can really start uh, an excellent long-term you know, community outreach to your company. So that's why I really think that Megaco should you know, consider our sponsorship. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Should we do one more? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Who one else? More? Yeah? Five minutes? Uh, uh, let's your see, choice, let's man. See. Your choice. Uh, my choice. Yeah, man. Um, Sharif? Yeah. yeah, come on up. Yeah, mine's quite easy to remove. All right. Let me. Hold on. No? You, you want mine, trust me. Do Don't do that? Yes. Okay. It's not in front of the screen. Ah. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. You're right. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Sharif. I'm from GDG Halifax. And my goal is to keep in touch with the community around me. I work from home in Halifax and I'm not in touch with the community because I work from home. So that's why I started the GDG. I didn't find any communities that relate to me, so I started one. And my goal is for everybody in the community to well, I think someone said that before, but I actually, that was my goal that I wrote on my phone, is to reach their goal while I reach my goal. <laughs> uh, so, I have selfish reasons for holding a GDG. That selfish reason is, how I became a developer today is that I taught a lot of people how to develop and it made me a much better developer. So I'm trying to give the community while keep myself up to date. So for example, I'm not, no longer a mobile developer, but I'm teaching Flutter, and that's how I keep updated with mobile development. Uh, the reason why you want to give me this is because I'm going to tweet about it, Google about it, uh, oh, no Google Plus, Facebook about it, LinkedIn <laughs> about it. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to brag about it in social media, and that's going to boost your performance as well. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, so we're all winners, just to say that. But we do have one prize that we have to give away. I could pull up the wheel, or we could do like a little clap meter type of thing. Let's do a clap meter, okay? Yeah. All right, so uh, let's, let's vote for Michael first. Okay, now for Joseph. Okay, and finally for Jareef. Oh, that was close. Damn. That was, that was very close. But dang, the, the, it's really close. What? I have another one at home, so I could always send it, I guess. Um, it's not one of those things you can really split in half. You know? Yeah, I mean, you could you could share it's not it. Yeah, a Lego set. you could share weekends and week weekdays, that type of thing. Uh, who 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 won this? I don't know. You Joseph, guys yell out Joseph. the name. Who do you think won? Shreve. All right, come on over. Let's see Shreve, the prize. Shreve, congratulations. Show me your prize. Show me your prize. 
Show it off. Open it all the way, all the way. It's not a mini. Open it all the way, all the way. Open it up. Open it up. Open it up. It's got some some logos on it. Yeah, it's swag. Yeah. Yeah, it's from Next. So. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much.